Thankful to be up to be here. Thankful to see each and everyone here. Do ask an interest in your prayers as I stand before you. If you have your Bibles with you, if you'd like to turn with me, please turn with me up to Psalms chapter 61. Psalms chapter 61. I want us to begin here uh, with the first two verses. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Remember the song we started out with the service song service today was rock that is higher than I. Uh, this subject has been on my mind and I pray the Lord bless and that's, that's something to think about. The rock that is higher than I. And you know, I'll just put it out here that we went uh, this weekend, uh, I had promised for years actually, that we would try and take the kids to go see the uh, laser show at Stone Mountain before they ever did away with it. Well, I didn't know they did away with it and then I thought, well, I guess I missed it. Well, they had it for this weekend, so I said, well, I'm going to try and go take them to that. It was free of charge for the laser show. I was tickled to death about that. But I went ahead and paid to go to the top of the mountain. I wanted to go to, again, it's been 20-something years since I'd been up there. And that got me thinking, the rock that is higher than I. You know, you stand up there at 800-something feet above ground and you're looking out across there and you could see as far as I could see on a clear day this so far away I could see a uh, cold mountain and coming I could see uh, the city of Atlanta I could see Buckhead I could see farther past those cities and those areas and I thought to myself as we could see that far away and growing up in uh, Roswell Georgia and getting to the top of the hill there near where we lived, you could look out a pass where there's a lot of trees now where there wasn't then and look over those trees and you could see Stone Mountain from Roswell, Georgia real easy. And it was pretty cool to see the lights flashing on top on those tall poles and uh, satellites and stuff. But it got me thinking to the rock that is higher than I. And how often have we been to the tops of the mountains and those that have climbed to the tops of the hills and those that have sought refuge in times where it felt like there was nowhere else to go but sometimes to go to the high place and the mountain you felt so close to God and then you've got those that bless their heart they don't even have a clue who the true living God is. They worship the uh, creation more than they do the Creator. But my dear friends, let me tell you, God had uh, created this entire uh, vast universe and He's created this earth and He's created the worlds and, and it's amazing how God has created such uh, majesty as He's done and, and, and formed things the way He's done it. And, and to look at that great big piece of stone and granite and to see how God could form that and bless it and uh, how the uh, uh, flood uh, during the times when He brought judgment upon the wickedness of this world and that He saved uh, eight souls uh, there that day, uh, Noah, there in Noah's ark and as He had protected them. Isn't that a beautiful picture of the way that we have been uh, surrounded there and and uh, when we go into baptism in obedience, what a beautiful picture there of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, but let me tell you this, don't you remember that Jesus had told Peter upon this rock? 
I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus Christ is a rock, the high rock, uh, a rock uh, that no man can uh, even even think about touching uh, uh, except God bless them to be uh, children of His and to be able to find a, a place, a, hi, uh, a hiding place, a, a shelter, salvation, uh, all that we need in that rock, uh, the true foundation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, that's the true rock that we need to have, my dear friends, because everything else in this world, uh, everything under the sun isn't that of our salvation, but only Jesus Christ is our salvation. Let us look here in Psalms chapter 61. I want us to look there where it says after verse 2 and verse 3, For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. Uh, for thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. And thou will uh, prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy uh, and truth uh, which may uh, preserve Him. Uh, uh, let me say that again. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve Him. So will I sing praise unto Thy name forever that I uh, may daily perform uh, my vows. My dear friends, uh, notice this. That in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10, what this is talking about is what uh, about our Lord and Savior. You see right there. Notice there uh, where it says, For thou, O God, hast heard my vows, thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life. Who is the king? Jesus Christ. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. And his years as many generations. Isn't that amazing? Have you ever seen a king for many generations? No. Well, we do have one that's still on his throne. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us look over in Isaiah chapter 53, uh, beginning with verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many? Who is his righteous servant? Jesus Christ. God the Father's righteous servant is Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son in Jesus. For He shall bear their iniquities, there will I divide Him a portion with the great. And He shall divide the spoil with the strong, because He hath poured out His soul unto death, and He was numbered with the transgressors, and He bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's a successful Savior. That's a successful Savior. That is the rock that is higher than I, isn't it? That's the rock that is higher than I. If I stand upon that rock uh, there at Stone Mountain and some like to say that it's not a mountain, that it's just a big mighty hill of granite and have a special name for it. Get over it. That's a mountain. Maybe a small mount. You know, Mount Zion wasn't a large mountain. It was a small mountain considered to most. Uh, mount Zion was small. It's always amazing to me that if you look at the Mars Hill there in Mars Hill that was kind of like Stone Mountain portion a large piece of granite that was higher and set above all that they had uh, made and all those uh, those areas in which that they worshiped their false gods and you remember the, the plaque said unto the unknown God and that Apostle Paul had preached unto them there at Mars Hill 
Could you imagine if a man stood there upon Stone Mountain today in this area of which we live and preached the gospel so that everybody could hear? Could you imagine that? I, I say that you probably could not hear his voice. What a ma- what an amazing thing that God blessed Apostle Paul's voice to be able to carry like that. Think about that. At Mars Hill. And they heard him. We have problems today that a man can preach the gospel within a small uh, building and yet people's ears has gotten so dull they cannot even hear him. I'm not talking about those that are hard of hearing. If you live around me, you understand, hey, I inherited the hard of hearing thing in my family. It, it, just, it is what it is. But let me say this, what I'm talking about, that there's those that don't even want to hear the gospel being preached in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, and they refuse to hear it. My dear friends, they had the same thing back then. It was those that had refused to hear the gospel preached in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. All they wanted to hear was soothsaying, and they wanted to hear something that uh, eased and soothed their ears instead of... uh, understanding the words and the truth of God's Word, my dear friends. And let me tell you this, today we're living in a world today uh, that they want to uh, make uh, rewrite history. They want to say what they want to say and make you believe each and every word uh, that they tell you. Uh, and you say, who's they? Anybody that opposes the truth, uh, my dear friends. Uh, uh, they want to, uh, everything to be woke today. But let me tell you this, truth has good. Truth has bad. Truth has uh, uh, <clears throat> that which is uh, high and exalted and those things that are brought low. Huh? That's what truth is about, my dear friends. Uh, there's right, there's left, there's up, there's down. There's all kinds of things that goes on when you speak truth. Uh, especially in the Word of God, you find those that have uh, done that which is righteous. You find those that are, uh, have done unrighteousness. You find those that God loves. You find find those that God hates uh, and brothers and sisters today huh? people are going about uh, establishing their own righteousness and preaching their own words instead of preaching uh, preaching the word of God as God had called ministers to preach my dear friends they're not preaching the truth they're not preaching Jesus Christ and them crucified they're preaching false uh, doctrine you see today Amen. The preaching of a, a Jesus Christ that needs help, uh, a Jesus Christ that is uh, weak, uh, a Jesus Christ that is uh, lowly, uh, uh, one that cannot do. Uh, they preach of a God Almighty that cannot save, except them ask them to do so for them and for their sake. My dear friends, that doesn't sound like a rock that is higher than I, does it? If the psalmist is saying here, if David, uh, one having a uh, <coughs> having a heart after God's own heart, and loves the Lord, and he's saying in our opening text, "Lead me to the rock that is higher than I." Lead me. My dear friends, that shows how pitiful he is. He needs help. Are you hearing me? He needs help. Uh, Except it be for God. Uh, uh, Except it be for God that has saved. Except it be for God's uh, grace uh, that has saved us. Except it be for God that He's done a mighty work inside of us. Except it be for God that is written there uh, in Romans chapter 8 in which Jesus, uh, God's Word tells us uh, that He foreknew and them He foreknew, them He also called and them He uh, predestinated and them He predestinated, them He called, them He called, them He justified and them He justified, them He glorified. That is the rock that is higher than I, my dear friends. It's a rock that is not uh, tangible. You can't hold it are you seeing? It's greater than you and me. 
anything that we stand upon today, the greatest mount in the world, and to think about that when the flood came and that it covered all the mountain tops and the peaks uh, thereof, they were under the water, my dear friends. Uh, that's a God that is able to flood the earth. Uh, and his great judgment and not only that that which he uh, flooded the earth he used to uh, flood that uh, ark there what destroys one saves another the same God that saves he can destroy others the one that loves one with an everlasting love he cannot love with an everlasting love he is a sovereign God an omnipotent God who can stay his hand? Scripture tells us. Who can stay his hand? Can you stay God's hand? Can you tell him yes or no? Do this or that? No, we can't do that. Again, he's the rock that is higher than I. Think about this. If we stand upon the highest peak in the world, and we have gone the distance, and we have done everything that we can. And the men and the women that have climbed some of the highest peaks in the world have lost their lives uh, because of the dangers and the extreme altitudes and everything that they are, are going through. Uh, they've lost their lives. They've been struck down with lightning. There's places God doesn't even want them uh, in this earth. Uh, there's places in which it's so dangerous uh, they, they just one after the other has lost their lives throughout history. Yet does that bring salvation? No. Yet is that a safe haven? No. Does it sound like a safe haven to me to go up into a high altitude and lose your life? Does it to you? Is that, a, is that a hiding place if you ask me? No, that's not a hiding place. That's danger zone if you ask me. That's not safe. Yet Mount Zion was a Little, little in stature. Which I think and believe with Mount Zion being so small in stature, what a beautiful picture that is of the New Testament church in the world today. It's small in the eyes of man. It's small in the eyes of the world. It's small. But in the eyes of God, he saw great things. Zion isn't just a particular place on a map today. Zion is here and now. Here in the New Testament church. Zion is wherever God's people is. Zion is, a, is who... Oh, wait a minute. It's where God dwells. There is a rock that is higher than I. You and I, all of God's people, there's... There's a great rock, Jesus Christ. At that place to dwell, and that place and that uh, city of Zion, and that place to have uh, and worship uh, God in spirit and in truth. Well, the word of the Lord tells us that where two or three are gathered, gathered there am I in the midst thereof. Well, this is not tangible, is it? What God has given His people as a tangible is something spiritual. When we come into a place like this and we see God's blessings upon the worship service and we feel the Spirit and it feels like a house full sometimes when you're singing and there's only just a handful of people in the congregation. Do you know what that is? The Spirit of God! Amen, amen. And worshiping in spirit and in truth, having his spirit there, blessing in a mighty way. It's not based upon uh, how perfect you're saying, although some think that that's the way it is. You can sing as beautifully and as perfect as a, a professional singer as you would want and not have the spirit. You could feel uh, goosebumps from the singing, but yet there's no Spirit. I want to hear the Spirit. Amen. More than the perfection, more than the goosebumps, 
more than the glory of man because the glory should go to the Lord not to man you see what I'm saying That's right. we could sing to the top of our lungs and sing in spirit and brothers and sisters that would be the best singing to me than anything else in the world that's great because you feel something there that is spiritual. They sing the singing of God's saints unto the Lord and praising Him in spirit and truth. There's nothing greater than that. Psalm 78, verse 15. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. What a God that we have that is able to do such things as that, that He cleave, cleave out the rocks and, and He giveth drink. And I want you to think about that, that how beautiful is that. Uh, up in North Georgia, there's an area in which you can take water and uh, get spring water that comes up out of the rock and go off to the side of the road and fill up jugs of water and, and get water from that rock. Uh, how cool is that? How many times have people tried and drilled down into the rock to get water and go through uh, yards and yards and yards of rock to get down to that water? And oh, uh, sometimes it's a good water. And sometimes they hit something that makes bad water. We see in Scripture in which the rock is a picture of Christ. Christ is our eternal salvation. And because He's our eternal salvation, He's our uh, foundation, the true rock, the rock and the chief cornerstone in which the builders rejected. You remember? Well, the world doesn't like the rock of our salvation. The world wants their rock, what they hewed out. They want the glory for themselves. But when it comes to salvation, let me tell you, the rock that is higher than I bringeth that salvation uh, and has that salvation. It's nothing that of myself. It's all upon Him. And not only that, because of that salvation and what we just quoted there in Romans 8, you find there that where uh, uh, the Lord has blessed us richly, He has provided for us, He's given us the tabernacle. He's given us the New Testament church, in other words. Uh, he, he has built it upon Himself. And there He blessed us for, with a here and now salvation. A timely salvation. You say, what is that? Well, the Bible says, save yourself from this wicked and untoward what? Generation. What are you saving yourself from? This wicked and untoward generation. The way of the world is in the way that the world lives today, my dear friends. You make a choice in this life to live after God and His righteousness in this life or you can make a choice to live after the world and do the things of the world and there's consequences thereof. My dear friends, that living after the righteousness of the Lord and taking on uh, Christ and putting on Christ and taking off the world, my dear friends, let me tell you this, it's not making you eternally saved. You have to already be a child of grace to know better to do that or not. You said I'm saying? Amen. You already have to have the knowledge inside of you. How do you have the knowledge to do it? By grace. By the work of the Holy Spirit. By being born again. By being spiritually alive. Can a dead man know anything? No. A dead man can't know that he needs salvation. A, can't, a dead man can't know that he uh, is dead. A dead man can't know that he needs life. A dead man can't know that he's hungry. A dead man can't ask for help. A dead man can't do nothing. He's dead in trespasses and sins. But by grace are you saved. That salvation, when we've been born again of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has quickened us and we've been born again of that Spirit, my dear friends, He dwells inside of you. 
He's blessed you richly to be His child. He, guess what? He put His Spirit inside of you. Can you put the Spirit, can you handle the Spirit of God? You can't handle the Spirit of God. You can't grab hold of it. You can't do anything with it. <clears throat> the only way that a person can know anything spiritually is that he be spiritually alive. You've got to be alive to know anything spiritual, don't you? A dead man can't know the things of this world of the lively because he's dead. You have to be alive in this world to know of the living, don't you? That's the kind of God that we serve. Did He love you that much? The fact that you want to know God, the fact you want to love God, the fact that you want to desire God is evidence God's done that work inside of you. you he's done a mighty work in you. He's blessed you with spiritual life in Christ Jesus. Now, because it's, the rock is that, that salvation of the Lord, He's blessed us with His tabernacle in His rock. He's, he's built His church upon His rock. He's blessed us with uh, water. He sustains us with the living water. You remember that dear sister at the well there in John chapter 4. This water that you drink of, you'll thirst again. But the water that I give you that springeth up unto everlasting life and to everlasting life, that you shall not thirst again. Amen. God gives us the living water. He gives us the water that no man has ever dreamed about. Isn't that amazing? And the cleft of that rock uh, and, and the cleaving it out and He blessed us the water to come forth out of a rock just as He did there in the, uh, in the, uh, for the children of Israel there when they were in the wilderness. Moses was to speak to the rock. He spoke not to the rock. He was angry and he struck and smote that rock. Well, the Lord was faithful. Wasn't the Lord faithful unto us? Moses didn't get to cross over into the promised land. It's the way we are today. If we're not obedient in God's Word, here and now, we suffer consequences here and now. If we live unto those things that are righteous and those things that are good, we reap that which we sow here and now. If we don't and we sow unrighteousness, we're going to reap unrighteousness. We're going to reap what we sow here. That's why it says save yourself from this wicked and untoward generation. By stepping out on faith, you say, Brother Brad, I don't understand this. I've got to... I've got to provide for my family. I've got to do this or that. I've got to do this. I've got to do uh, what God had given me. I can't step out on faith. I'll be poor. You trust the Lord, the Creator, King of kings and Lord of lords to provide for you who is able to speak all into being that even at your darkest hour who is the rock that is higher than I? Are you trusting? I can tell you from years of being in business and from starting a business from nothing and, and trying to, uh, uh, by God's grace, be able to get it to grow. To do that so that I could go around and preach the gospel unto God's people my dear friends, let me tell you this. It was only God and to God the glory. There would be times in which that I would think, well, it's over now. I remember my old pastor, Brother Lonnie, used to tell me things like this, Brother Brad, you know, you've got to believe the Lord even when it gets tough. Even when the trials is hard. I have another one of my pastors, Brother Lloyd, would help me understand that, hey, uh, we go through these trials because we are serving the Lord and Satan doesn't like it. That's right. 
And there'll be times in which you feel things get so dark and so despairing, so horrible, and you think, oh, poor and woe is me. And you get into a, I feel sorry for myself mentality. God can't get me out of this. It's so dark. I, I can't get to the church today because look at what I'm going through. I can't go to church because I'm so depressed. I can't go to church because hey, I'm hurting all over. I can't do this or that because of this. There's always something Satan's going to throw in your way to try and discourage you from following after God and His Word and following in obedience, my dear friends. I'm not talking about real things that people are really sick and cannot get out. That's not what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. What about you trying to do something good for your family and somehow something happens and it just seems like one thing after the next. You do something for the church as a gospel minister. You preach the gospel and power and demonstrate to the Holy Spirit and Satan's beating up on you and the next thing you know because you did this or that, oh, it just feels like everything's coming at you with both barrels. You didn't go to church most of your life and now you're trying to go to church and it just feels like everything's going wrong because you're now coming. I don't know what your problem is, what you're going through, what you, your sacrifices are, but brothers and sisters, trust the Lord. He is able. Yeah. He is able. He is able to provide. Uh, <laughs> I've seen God uh, bless and turn things around in a split second just like that. When I thought it was the deepest, the darkest, craziest thing, uh, then turns around and blesses me with something else that I didn't even dream about. Uh, I've seen the Lord bless me with jobs coming at me from right and left to where I couldn't even handle it all uh, when it was just dead as a doornail right before it. I've seen God bless me with the right job at the right time when I needed that at the right time when I felt exhausted and I couldn't get through. Uh, I've seen the Lord bless me and sustain me to be able to travel from place to place uh, preaching the Gospel and working all through the week uh, for weeks on end, months on on. My dear friend, God sustain me, my dear friends. He'll take care of you as, as long as you are seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Not your righteousness. His righteousness, not yours. His will, not your will. His word, not your word. Amen. Don't put words in God's mouth. Don't take it out of context. Don't manipulate it. Take it for what it is. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Let it be wrong that you're wrong. When God says you're wrong, you're wrong. When God says you're right, you're right. I want to be in right, don't you? That's what I'm talking about. That is the rock that is higher than I. You don't understand it. That's part of living by faith and not by sight. It's part of being able to understand where God is and where you're not. It's able to understand that where you want to be and ask God to lead you as, Paul, as, as David was saying there. He said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I remember the day of my ordination. Uh, uh, Elder Daniel Wood had called, called me up and said, Brother Brad, I, I'm praying for you. I'm praying the Lord will bless you to be lifted up high on the mountain top of glory. My dear friends, uh, uh, that's the way ministers talk about when they go into the pulpit that you be lifted up high and exalted high in the mountain. Top, my dear friends, uh, that's where you want to be when Moses was there with the Lord and God had blessed him to be able to write the Ten Commandments. Uh, and even the second time he had to go and have it rewritten again because of his first time when he came out of the mount and he saw the children of Israel worshiping false uh, gods down there, uh, throwing their naked bodies across these things and worshiping these idols uh, instead of worshiping the Almighty God. <laughs> 
they clothed in their right mind as they ought to have been. Trusting the living God. They weren't trusting God. They were trusting their idols. Uh, the brothers and sisters Moses threw the Ten Commandments down out of anger. Is it not the way it is for us? Uh, uh, we get angry and we start sinning. Uh, that's what Moses did. He got angry and he sinned and he broke the Ten Commandments. Uh, that's the way we are. The Bible tells us be ye angry and what? Sin not. Uh, we're not to sin when we're angry. But how often do we sin when we get angry? All the time. And he had to go back up there and the Lord blessed him to have the second uh, set made. And he had to cover him as he passed by. He could not, he could not handle the glory of God in that mount. Brothers and sisters, we can't even we can't even fathom and handle. We can't even fathom and handle the glory of the Lord. The true glory, the all I mean the all out glory of God. We can't handle it in our frail bodies. But yet David knows of a, of a God, of a Savior, whose rock is higher than he is. And he says, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. How often have you been? I can't even fathom, I can't even put in words in times in distress, in mourning, in grief. And joy and happy, whatever it may be. And you cry out unto God and you say, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Because I can't do this anymore. God, hold me up. Strengthen me in this time of need. Because you're the rock that is higher than me. You go into a mountaintop hoping that you can't be fine. There are satellites that can see you on the tops of those mountaintops. You try to hide under a tree. God sees you under that tree, my dear friends. You try to hide in a cave. Uh, nobody may see you, but God sees you in that cave. God even knows every element and every atom that makes up everything in this earth. He sees. Because he's the creator. Before there was x ray vision, there was God's eyes. Before anything that you think that you can make that is great scientific technology and discoveries, there was God that was greater than that. When you stand up on a mountaintop in the middle of a storm, you feel exposed, don't you? And the lightning is very dangerous and extreme up on top of that mountain and you're closer and you're in more danger of getting struck by lightning uh, there on the top of that mountain than you are down on the ground. Oh, but there's not that lightning... Although God can strike you with lightning. But I want you to think about a God that is higher and greater than anything that we could ever think or imagine. Who is able to keep you and protect you and help you in your time of need as we I preached here recently. We serve a God who is able, who is not disabled. We serve a God that is able to keep us in those times and present times of help and hard times that we're going through. Uh, that's the kind of God that we serve. <clears throat> I want us to turn to Isaiah chapter 2 verse... Um, 21. I want us to look at this. To go into the clefts of the rocks 
and into the tops of the rag, uh, ragged rocks for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He ariseth to shake terribly the earth. I want us to look in Isaiah 2 more on how that there in verse 5 it says, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. In verse 6, Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from their east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves and the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there uh, any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. And they worship the work of their own hands, uh, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man uh, bows down, and the great man hum- humbleth himself. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock, it says there in verse 10, and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the uh, haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty and upon every one that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of the Lebanon that are high and lifted up and upon all the oaks Abation, and upon all the high mountains and upon all the hills that are lifted up and upon every high tower and upon every fenced wall and upon all the ships of Tarshim and upon all pleasant pictures and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be made low and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day and the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes and the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He arises to shake terribly the earth. And that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the rugged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He arises to shake terribly the earth. Notice the last verse. I know that's a lot, but notice what it's teaching here. Last verse. See she for man whose breath is in the, his nostrils for wherein is he to be accounted of? Hmm. Our life is but a vapor. We have everlasting life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We have an eternal home preserved for us. We have a blessed hope that is not like the hope of this world it's an earnest expectation and who is the earnest? Christ our Lord and Savior He dwells there He's at the right hand of God Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God my dear friends we have an earnest hope do we not? what a great thing the Lord has blessed us to have in this life We've been blessed with the New Testament church. We've been given us so much. I want us to look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 through 52. Jesus, when He had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent and twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake. And the rocks rent. Do you know how strong you've got to be to rent rocks? Think of this. That is the power of God. 
God. That he had the ability to rent rocks. We can't even imagine what it felt like the day that Jesus Christ gave up the ghost and the darkness that fell upon this earth and the earth quaked and the rocks rent. That's an almighty God. And when Jesus Christ died, He did it for our sakes, for all of God's elect people. You say, what in the world? No, hey, the children of Israel is as the sand of the sea that's numerous. Greater than any man could count. Spiritual Israel by speaking of. And the graves were open, and many, hey, and many bodies of the saints which slept the rose. What a God we serve! What a God we serve. Let us turn one more last scripture in Job chapter 28. You can look at Job 28, verse 9 through 28 later, but I want us to look at 9 through 11 just right here. He put forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. You look at the roots of the mountains. They go all the way up to Dawson County, Georgia, where I live. You can see evidence of the mount of Stone Mountain, the roots of Stone Mountain, all the way veins that go that far out. Imagine that. Isn't that amazing? It says that he overturneth the mountains by the roots. What a God we serve. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eye seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. God's people has been praying, God, bring the light, the wickedness, and the evil that is going on in this world. Bring it to naught. Lord, help us to strengthen us and be with us and bless us with God-fearing individuals to be leaders. Yet the things that are being brought to light today, isn't it amazing how people are complaining about the very thing that they had prayed for? But God, those things that were done in darkness, God is bringing to light. We shouldn't be surprised, should we? It should make us actually think about just how that we serve an almighty, awesome God. And how we ought to fear God and what? Keep His commandments. The Bible says, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Do you love God? Keep His commandments. There's blessings when we live and the things of the Lord when we seek those things above instead of those things right here now and below. Brothers and sisters, let us pray a prayer and ask what David asked of the Lord. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. O oh Lord, please. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Because what a blessing it is to be able to find our peace, our refuge, our strength, and to understand where our salvation lies. And where we find a place to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, the sitting that rock that is higher than I, is something not tangible. You can't see it. You can't pick it up. You can see the evidence thereof. You can feel the Spirit therein. And you can worship therein. And you can find comfort where no others find comfort. You find peace where no others find peace. You find strength where no others find strength. Uh, and you find a place of refuge where there's times of trouble. And you can rejoice in the Lord when others are not rejoicing. 
and you find a height that nobody else has found that is far higher and greater than yourself. May God help us, strengthen us, and be with us. Thank you for your time and kind sweet attention. Continue to keep us in your prayers. Amen. Amen.